part three, hallelujah, the title is long, is how to avoid to be swayed away when finances come. Hallelujah. How to avoid to be swayed away when finances come. And lastly, how to avoid to be swayed away when finances come. Amen. And by God's grace, we conclude next Sunday and we do anointing as we communicated uh, uh, last Sunday. Amen. Uh, a scripture in First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 7 is giving us some counsel information, where very critical information and warnings. It says, for we brought nothing in to this world and it is certain we carry we can carry nothing out hallelujah this one is a powerful thing when we enter earth you didn't bring anything amen when you exit earth you are not going with anything hallelujah even if there are millions in absa account they will stay behind you will go by yourself that's what it is saying. Amen. Verse 8. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Verse 9 is giving us a warning. But those who desire to be rich, hallelujah. Does anybody desire to be rich? Amen. I know it's a warning here, but do you desire to be rich? Remember what we say in the beginning, this teaching is for people who want to walk in higher financial dimensions. People who want to leave impact in business, in what God has called you to do. Listen to warnings because they are giving you wisdom so that you don't fall into the same traps like other people. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drawn men into destruction and perdition. Meaning, remember we have said uh, finances, when it's, it has the potential to shift you away from God. Hence, here is the warning. It will shift you away from God, and somebody can even lose their own soul because of the pursuit of getting Riches. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Verse nine. Another warning. Oh, it's verse 10. Uh, which verse are we now? Verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Hallelujah. For which some, hence it's a warning, for which some, not everyone, Hallelujah. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Hallelujah. He's saying some is not everyone. Hence, we are bringing this teaching so that when you get there, you are not part of the psalm. Hallelujah. So you are not part of the psalm. Now, the Bible says, for the love of money. Amen. Sometimes on Facebook, people say money is evil. The, the love of money is a root of all kind of evil. Hallelujah. Amen. The love of money is the... The love of money is... Is it it's on the screen? You can read. Just don't mind what I'm doing here. <laughs> Is the love of man. Amen. This is one of the expressions in the Greek word. Uh, it's one word anyway in the Greek. So in English it's translated in two words uh, like that as an expression to say the love of man. Amen. Is the root of all kind of evil. Amen. We are demonstrating this is money. Amen. When it goes to, this money is, it goes to my wife's hand. The money is not evil. Hallelujah. 
the money will just take the character of the person who's holding it by that time. Amen. If my wife is a drug lord, he shall never be. Amen. It's an exa- if he's a drug lord, then the money will take that character. And it can be used for drugs. But the money itself is neutral. The money is just taking after the character of the person who's holding it, who's handling it. Amen. Now here the Bible says, for the love of money is a root of all kind of evil. Now, when the, the source of evil, we know is from the enemy, the devil. But in the heart, if the, 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 the disposition of the heart is that I have to get money at all costs. Hallelujah. When it's like that, then the love of money becomes the root of all evil. Money itself is neutral. But when the disposition of your heart is at all costs, I have to get it by fire, by force, by fake, by crook, money has to reach me. Then the person ends up start doing things contrary to God's word. Hallelujah. That was somebody, you have seen it on the news, I can go and make life insurance for my wife. But after three months, in my heart, the plan was, after three months, I'm going to kill her so that the money can come to me. Hallelujah. You look strange as if you have never heard things like that. Amen. People, somebody is pregnant, they... They hijack the pregnant woman. But the intention is so that when she gives birth, they take the child. They sell the child to the European. Hallelujah. The love of money is the root of all evil. So I see this pregnant woman. I have contact in Europe. Some millionaire there. They are looking for a child. Then I hijack this woman. And I ensure he, how if she's not ready to be birth, I block her. Up until it's the time of giving birth, she gives birth. Then we release the woman. We take the child. We sold the child. How much is the child? Two million rand. They send me two million rand. I sold the child. Because why? I need the money so I can do anything. Hallelujah. That's where the root now is. The root is evil. Now the money, he is the one now drawing me. How do I get it anyhow, anywhere? How do I get it by fire, by crook? How do I get it? But money itself is neutral. It is a medium of transaction. It takes the character of the person who is holding it. Hallelujah. This same money too may go somewhere else. It may find in, in land into the hand of somebody. They go and buy drugs. The same money with the same bank note, uh, bank number. Hallelujah. Currency, money is neutral. Hallelujah. Money takes the character of the person who's holding it. Hallelujah. So money is not evil. Amen. So when we quote it, we quote it nicely. The love of money is a root of all evil. Not money is a root of all evil. Amen. I hope we understand. Glory to the Lord. Amen. So in part one, we dealt, uh, we say in Bible, you'll see a, lo- a lot of warnings that coming through scriptures. And uh, dominant area in the Bible with regard to warnings is sexual immorality, the issue of idolatry, the issue of hell is, is the reality. Other people, they just live as if hell is not there. It's a reality that is there. And the other area that and there is a lot of warnings in the Bible, is the area of finances. Hence, we, we dive di- a deeper into that. You say finance can drift somebody away from God. Finances has the capacity to make somebody proud. Say, oh, we used to think you were humble, but money has come. What is happening? Money. Hallelujah. It has the potential. You were all the time a humble person. At work, they promote you. You become the big boss. But then the, the wife starts feeling the pressure. Hallelujah. Because the boss at work becomes also the boss at home. Now she's under pressure because I am now the boss. I've been promoted. Hallelujah. What has happened? Because money has come. It has made me now to become bossy even in the house. 
Hallelujah. Hence, we listen to warnings because when it's like that, it stay up in that way. When the woman start crying to God, utilizing that strategy, Lord, when I heard the husband before the promotion, he was a good man. But look here now, they pain because he's promoted at work. Look how the pressure, the relationship is strained. He is now treating me as a slave, no longer as a partner, a companion. That cry before God, when God looks down and realizes this is the promotion that has caused that, let us withdraw the promotion and have your husband back. Hallelujah. And mysteriously, things like that cannot happen. Somebody is retrenched. Is it a spiritual attack? No, because it brought something within you and it became a source of oppression against your loving partner, your companion, that you should enjoy together the promotion. Then the person is retrenched. It is to teach you that when you go up there, Humility is what will sustain you up there. And I am the source of provision so that your home, you can do things with ease and let the promotion or the finances become a source of strain in the house. Hallelujah. Part two, last Sunday with her, with those, he saying, please listen carefully and as we are crying out to God. In the journey of life or in terms of the way we live, some people, are in a survival mode. Hallelujah. Survival mode. I'm recapping for, I've seen few faces were not there. We will finish on time and finish next week. Hallelujah. As we committed, uh, please remind me to announce on the anointing what we're doing next Sunday. My dear wife, I'm not to cross you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it was meant to be a joke. Hallelujah. Uh, we say, the, I'm just summarizing so that I link up to today. Last Sunday, when they were launching, we were talking, the four levels of livings, to say is, there are people who are living in a survival mode. Survival mode, when I have money, it's never enough. If I pay school fees, it means that month I shouldn't buy grocery because there's no money. Hallelujah. And I pay rent and I have transport. I have to skip two things. So this month, let the school understand. I paid them last month, so let us this month use this school fees money and buy grocery. Survival mode. Hallelujah. And the reason of that, so that he can take you to prayer, is not the intention of God, as you heard it last Sunday, to be in a survival mode throughout five years, ten years, survival mode. Hallelujah. And then there is comfort mode. In the comfort mode, your basic needs are met with that strain. You can have accommodation, transport, school fees, food, and whatever with that strain. Comfort. Hallelujah. Then you start moving into luxury. The basic are met, you've got access. So I can go, oh, now it's December, we are going to Cape Town. I'm not thinking twice. It's just I'm looking for which is the best time. When can I take leave so that I can go to Cape Town? For holiday. Funds are there. And when I go for holiday in Cape Town, the school fees in January will not be strained. Hallelujah. I am not using January school fees to go to Cape Town. Because in January they'll say, where is the school fees? Hallelujah. Then we start crying out to God, help. No, you are not wise. Amen. So we're dealing with luxury. And we say it can move somebody now to be in an extravagance level. Where money is never an issue. Hallelujah. Where money is never an issue. Even in the week here, we had the testimony. Somebody sent money from outside the country. Another one. Hallelujah. Remember, we are international ministry. So it has become international. Amen. My wife asked that person outside the country, what would you like the pastor to pray for you, for the seed you have sown? He said, no, I am just grateful. Amen. They are grateful as they want to sow a seed. They are grateful because they lack nothing. They have everything. If they say tomorrow I'm going to America, they will go. Hallelujah. They are grateful. That's the word. I'm thankful. I'm in gratitude. I'm just expressing gratitude because I have. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I'm, as I'm talking, if they say, tomorrow I am going to America, they will go. That's how it is. Amen. I am coming to South Africa. They will come. And they will not stay at a hotel. They've got a house. It's waiting for them. Amen. Not a townhouse. Or not a house. A upper market is waiting for them. If they decide to come to South Africa for one week, the house is there waiting for them. Amen. And where they are also, they stay. If they are tired of this, they can move somewhere else into another house. Hallelujah. They are into extravagance now. Now we are bringing a warning to say if you are in a survival mode or extravagance, both extreme have the potential to shift somebody away from God. When things are so tough for a long time, there is a possibility somebody to start compromising because things are tough. Hallelujah. And when we are in this side, where everything is at ease, there is a possibility of, and there is no need for God. I have arrived. Hallelujah. Hence the warning. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, how to avoid to fall into these traps? Amen. In the past, I might maybe mention it here again when one of the points. I've spoken to uh, another guy. I've told him he's into construction. Because he asked me to bring him something when I went to China and I brought for him. Hallelujah. He's into construction, into business, and he's doing very well. And some of these things he is, is, is concerned. This is his lifestyle of some of what we're going to share here today. And even other people have concerned. So take this point seriously. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, to avoid falling into these traps... Few points. Point number one. Please write down. Hallelujah. Cultivate and nurture your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Cultivate and nurture your relationship with God. I'll give an example here before we, uh, after we have read the scripture. Psalms. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 summarizes for us. There are many scriptures, but since we are dealing with five points today, we're going to bring maybe one scripture or two. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditate day and night. Please look as if the Bible is yours, that word delight. He is not being forced. He is not being pushed. He has that pleasure in the law of the Lord. When he, he discovered the ways of God, he is drawn into that. He, 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 that's where he finds satisfaction. Hence, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, God's law, God's word, God's ways, he meditate day and night. Somebody say amen. His, his passion, he, he's got a drive that when he sees the laws of God, he doesn't have a, a, he does not, you don't need to push him. You don't need, it's not an obligation to him, but it is delight. He finds pleasure in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he made dead end. Verse 3. Because of that, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. Because he is all the time connected to the source. All the time receiving from the source. All the time plugged to the source. He is, it, his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's like he is dwelling in God. And he understand God's mind. He understand God's heartbeat. Now what he's doing outside? Things are prospering. Why? Because of the connection that he has. So as people to avoid to fall into the trap, 
Number one, cultivate and nurture your personal relationship. I'm telling you this will bring a discipline within you. When you are at a million level, you will, if this discipline is there, the moment you get to 10 million, this discipline will help you to stay connected and know that God, you are the source. God, you are the provider. God, these things cannot make me proud when I am still connected and nurturing this relationship with you. The care you take in nurturing your relationship with God will make you grounded and not easily shaken or swift away when money comes. Hallelujah. I'm reading again. The care you take in nurturing your relationship with God will make you grounded so that you are not easily moved or shaken or taken away from God when money comes. Hallelujah. When money comes, when you are nurturing your relationship with God, he, he, you will develop this intimacy with God. And that's what God, God, I'm, I told you in part one, God is not, he is not a stingy God. He's a benevolent God. God is gracious. God is looking for channels through which his agenda and many lives will be touched. And that channel has to still be connected to God in partnership with God. Then you become the place where God is utilizing as a channel to reach out to others. Now, when the, when the relationship is in nature, you are, re, you are in the place where you can be able to recognize even the voice of God. God is wanting me to do one, two, three. Remember to do one, two, three. It can be a godly idea. God is inspiring you. Enter into this business. Start this in. Why? It's coming from being connected to God and it starts inspiring you. You can be able to recognize his voice. You can be able to understand spiritual things. Hallelujah. There was a preacher in Nurse Praise. He said, my wife, he said, the same thing you were teaching. Hallelujah. In part one, the, the preacher also is preaching. And the other thing he said, there is no one who go up without the help of the spirit. And when you are up, there is no two way. There is no middle ground. You are on God's side or you are on the devil's side. Anyone that you see higher up there dominating in finance, in music, in, 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 in wealth, in entertainment, when they are up there celebrated across the nation, across the continent, even globally, please be aware they have a spirit behind them backing them up. Either God or an evil spirit. There is no one rises just like that. No way. Because it was the design of God. He has to be of your assistant, backing you up to rise. And spiritual truth, they run in parallel. What is true on, the, on God's side is true on the enemy's side, but for an evil purpose. No one rises. The other day, people were here for Saturday prayer. We talked, i show you an example. There is a, a, a musician here, and some of you maybe listen to a music and that. Uh, there is a spirit that is backing her up. Hallelujah. Even the people come to a house, they are eating. When they finish cooking, before they eating, remember you have gone to so-and-so's house. So-and-so that time, allow media, you are welcome to come and video and see what, how my life goes every day. Hallelujah. When they finish cooking, they take some of the food. She takes some of the food. She is a she. Hallelujah. Goes upstairs into a mansion where she stays. One of the room, it's an altar. Hallelujah. Say, so these are the spirits that help me to rise up the way I am popular. And put food on the altar through incantation. Why? Let the spirit eat first before the people eat. Because the spirit has to be on a fast. Hallelujah. And then when they came down after the incantation, now everyone could eat. Hallelujah. And they show another part too. How she does it now at the river when the money has come. The first portion is to go and honor the spirit. Hallelujah. What are they doing? They are doing biblical principles that God has meant for his children. But the children of God, many of them, they don't want to do those. And the evil one take them and they apply it to the evil spirit. Hallelujah. 
That's why we say, when money comes, God first. He's not to say, bring it to church. Pastor is looking for money. No, he's the spiritual principle. The spirit you are serving want to be honored first. If you want to rise. Hallelujah. When it comes, it enters you first and everything finished. Was there any part of the what you have received as a sacrifice to the spirit you are worshiping? No, things are tough. They are not tough. You ain't pick and pay buying grocery. Why is the portion for the spirit you are worshiping? God wants to be first. And it's not about church. He's not about here. We, even when you travel, you relocate to Cape Town, you relocate to Dubai. You must find a way of appeasing, of raising a sacrifice to God. Sacrifices continue. The only sacrifice we do not raise to God is a sacrifice for you to be saved. Jesus has done that. When you enter, that's why Philippians say, what, they, what you are sending me, Philippians, Paul is saying, it was a sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. But it, they were not burning it to reach God. The priest was receiving on behalf of God. Then God has to move. That's why we say, and my God shall supply all your need. Hallelujah. For you to qualify to say, my God shall supply. No. Are you doing once and again supplying for the advancement of the kingdom of God? Philippians 4.15. Before you can come and claim Philippians 4.19. Hallelujah. That spirit wants to be first. Hallelujah. And since I've said this example, it's, it's because it's warning. There is a guy I've, I've given him, his name is Douglas. He's into construction. I have been to his house. I have asked and I've told you before, when I see a wealthy person, whether they are on God's side or on the evil side, I want to understand which spiritual principle they are applying. Amen. We have met one person is a Hindu. Hallelujah, with my wife. He's rich. He's a good uh, person, you know, by nature. We talk. He's like, hey, pastor, this and this. We talk, but he's a Hindu. And then in my way, I'm trying to find how do I land on him so that he can tell me the spiritual principle he's applying. Amen. There is my wife. He say, when we get, after we have made ourselves, we need to go and buy, you know, in the Hindu way, some flowers they do to burn to their God and whatever. Sacrifice first to God, to their God. And the guy here in construction that I'll give maybe two examples of his, is a Christian. Doing well, he's up there, but money has not entered his head. He's still recognizing God. And then the way he does things, at his office, he has also a prayer room. Hallelujah. You don't need to have, be a Muslim to have a prayer room. He has a prayer room at his office. When he leaves his house, when he gets to the office, is the prayer room first before his office. Hallelujah. That's what the discipline he has built in nurturing the relationship with God. When he was handling the 10,000, the 100,000, now he's in million. It's the same discipline. Nurturing of the relationship with God. When he gets to his office, he goes into the prayer room. Even if they are contracted there waiting, his nice deals there waiting for him. If he arrives, that's the first place he goes to go and worship God. Lord, I thank you. You have uh, allowed me to wake up this day. You have given me this company. In the name of Jesus, I would like to honor you in this day. Thank you for connecting me. Thank you for bringing opportunity. I am not passing anyone any brown envelope to get any tender. You are the Lord who has been supplying all of this. He's appreciating God. And he say, including the workers. Some of you know in construction, some people when they come on Monday, they are babalized. He pray for them. Lord, when they are building, even though they are babalized, Lord, I pray may you give them wisdom. Let the, the, the laying of bricks, the laying of foundation be done with skill. Inspire them. They may do well so that they, we may pass the quality assurance and get our our, our payment. Worshipping God. Thereafter he goes in his office. And now he can deal with this and that. Honoring God first. Hallelujah. Number two. When he gets found, he says, I give seven ways. Hence, I say, Patrick, I do not pray for money. Huh? He does not pray for money. He says himself, he does not pray for money. 2014. Hallelujah. November. I can't forget. Amen. He said, I'm not, I, we are still on point number one. He does not pray for money because he has understood the ways of God. 
He is meditating in the ways of God. And he has agreed with God. Every time resources come, I will give in seven ways. Way number one, the money that comes to me, I will honor you with the tithe. You will be the portion that will come to God first before I consume of it. Number two, when the money comes, there is a widow and an orphan that I need to be a channel of blessing to them. Because when I give to a poor person, I am lending to the Lord. And you, oh God, you are not like Mashonisa. I can lend money, you disappear. You will not disappear. You are the provider. The channel of blessing, somebody else. I need to benefit from Philippians 4.19. So let me do Philippians 4.15. Is there a missionary way? Are there evangelists here who are going on the ground? Is there a mission? Let me support this mission. Hallelujah. He gave me that one. Let, when I approach God in every service, there is my offering. He is describing. Ha, ah, my wife is running an event by that time. He in San City. Me, I'm in the, ooh, where is he coming? My wife, I met somebody who does not have a prayer request on finances. Amen. He said, I'm doing this, and this is, has been my discipline. And it has taken me from this level to that level to that level. Hallelujah. When he's talking like that in his house, I've given you an example. The way he's so I said, God, in this place, I can hear your voice. Without any disturbance, because everything is nice in here. Everything is in order. The garage is in order. The lounge, everything is in order. But he's a worshiper of God. Why? There is no one who go up there without the assistance of the Spirit. And there is no one who's up there who is in the middle ground. You have to be on God's side or on the evil side. Otherwise, you will come down. Hallelujah. Nurturing your relationship with God. In this life, the higher you go, there is no in between. Somebody say amen. The higher you go in business, there is no in between. The higher you go in politics, there is no in between. The higher you go in law, there is no in between. The higher you go in music, there is no in between. You have to be on God's side or on the evil side. Otherwise, you come down. I'm not prophesying. I'm bringing a warning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He have to be that way in the name of Jesus. To avoid falling into the traps when money comes. Please, in your waiting period, cultivate and nature your relationship with God. Be grounded in the ways of God. One thing for sure, please don't forget this. God is the wisest. When he has put his word like that, who are we to question the ways of God. He said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than it. As the heaven is higher above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Hallelujah. When it's there, I know, especially some uh, other Christians, not every son. When money comes, it's like, it's my money. Ooh, please be here next Sunday and understand who's the owner. And God wants you, when you understand he's the owner, then things start working because you know who's the owner of it. When you take it, it's my money. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, when you are serving a spirit, it's never your money. It is God's money. And by, let me put everyone at ease. When we say it's God money, we are not saying it's church money. Hallelujah. So that everyone is at ease. He is the owner and we have to account to him. We will touch on those, some of that part next Sunday as well. Uh, in detail. Amen. God wants to desire to be, people to be blessed and to become a channel of blessing. In Genesis 12, he says to Abraham, it's to bless him. And be, make him a blessing. Hallelujah. It means you are the conduit through which other people's life are being blessed through you. Hallelujah. Have you seen somebody say, Lord, I pray for promotion. Lord, I'm crying out for promotion. When you are crying out for promotion in your bedroom, your boss and the senior manager, they are not there to hear the prayer. Hallelujah. God in his sovereignty, the strategy we have just learned here, touches the heart of the senior manager.
to ensure the effect what God wants in your life that you have been crying for. Promotion. Then the person is promoted. Because God's blessing comes from God through men to you. Hallelujah. God's blessing comes from God through men to you. Hallelujah. Things they used to fall, manna, there was a season manna were falling from heaven. Directly into people. From heaven directly. But it does not fall again that way. When you need money from God, please, it will come from another human being to you. But it's a God answer. Hallelujah. When you need a husband, you are crying out to God. But did God release the husband just like that? He came. Boom. I wake up. Oh, there is a darling already here. Hey, Mfundisi, come and marry us. No. Hallelujah. It's raining. I hope you can still hear. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, where are we? Whoa. What they are saying here, God is confirming by sending us the rain. You can hear. You can you can hear. As I come down, uh, the people on camera, they can come. They will come to church next Sunday. Oh, what? Hello. Oh, must raise the sound. You, oh, it's gone up, eh? Oh, all right. Hallelujah. Touch screen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is confirmed. Please, nature your relationship with God. It will help you at this level, at that level, at the other level. Amen. Number two, for those who are writing, be faithful at the level where you are at. Be faithful at the level where you are at. If you want to avoid to fall into the traps when finances come. Be faithful at the level where you are at. And in fact, is to be faithful at which level and whatever level God takes you. I hope you understand my point. When I'm at this level, let me be faithful. When I'm that level, let me be faithful. When I'm the other level, let me be faithful. So that I am not the one putting a limit, a cap on God on how far I can go. I hope you understand. I don't want to be the one saying to God, when I reach million, I'll get crazy. So let me stay in the hundred. Because when million came, boom, I stopped eating, I stopped worshiping, there is no time for prayer, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. Like that. Hallelujah. And when those things happen to the people we see on TV, I blew it. Don't say it will not happen to you. You are not in their shoes yet. Hallelujah. Hence, we are bringing the teaching so that you are aware. When that time comes, you will not shift away from God and blew away 10 million rent in a year. January, you were 10 million, but in December, now you have to borrow money for transport to go home because the money has been blown away by the wind. Hallelujah. Be faithful at the level where you are. Now, God, Jesus Christ, I need to follow. There is two main points I will mention under this point that I need you to receive with your heart. Uh, under number one, we are still be faithful at the level where you are. Maybe you can put 2.1. Jesus is talking about the subject of, being, uh, of a stewardship in handling resources. In Luke 16, verse 10, Hebrew, if you can put for us. Uh, Luke 16, verse 10 to 12. It says, he who is faithful in what is least is also, is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, you understand from last Sunday on Sunday number one, the mammon, the, the god of money or riches or resources, who will commit to you, to your trust, the true riches? Amen. This is not for you to answer. It's a rhetoric question to show you that if the person was not handling things faithfully at this level, when you are at a higher level, the chances are higher that you're still not going to be faithful. 
because it's not just going to automatically change. Hallelujah. Verse what now? Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man, who will give you what is yours? Hallelujah. Please remember this. When we are trusting God, there is way back I learned about these things. When I first saw it, I, will, I didn't like it. I felt offended. But I'm going to say it because over time it has helped me. Amen. Please remember, when you are trusting God for finances, because we are dealing here now with finances, God also needs to reach a level of trusting you first before it can be released. Amen. God also needs to trust you before he can release. And when he's bringing this cancer, his ways are not our ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you bring it practically, God, if I, you, I have 20,000, hey, if at 20,000 I am not faithful in lending finances, Please remember, handling finances is not only giving to church. Being a good steward is every aspect. Are you practicing the covenant of giving and receiving? Are you practicing the principle of investment and saving? Are you practicing the principle of opening multiple streams of income so that you are not only here, the day you are retrenched, you are also thrown out of the house because everything is gone. Hence, the principle of opening up other channels of income. Hallelujah. Now, if at 20, to apply what Jesus is saying, if you are not being faithful in managing it like that, when you reach 50, it's not going to turn that you become faithful. As he's saying, when you are faith, unfaithful in little, the chances are you will be also unfaithful in much. When you are faithful in little, it will create a discipline and an accountability system within you so that when you reach that higher level, you are not moved. I hope somebody understands. Because God wants people to be faithful. It is a require of you as a steward to be faithful. It is a require of you to be faithful. We are all stewards. Everything belongs to God. The skill you have come from God. The money come from God. The children come from God. How faithful are you in raising children in the way that pleases God? Because we will account also for that before God. Hallelujah. Stewardship is a cross. Though here we are emphasizing on finances because of what we are dealing. He is a cross. The person's life. How are you taking care of the body that God has given you as a tool to be legal here on earth. How? His everything goes. If every day, take away goals, take away goals, take away is reducing the life. And when you appear before God in glory, he will ask you, you have come here before time. And the reason you come before time, the body could not handle, could not support you again. Hence your spirit left and came to me. But you came before time. Why? You were not good steward of the body I gave you to be legal here on earth. Hallelujah. So stewardship is a cross. The second point on this point I wanted to mention is this. Please receive this with your heart. God is a faithful God. Oh, God is merciful. Let's maybe use the word merciful. He's a merciful God. There are times when you are handling finances, you are not exposed to this truth. Hallelujah. And by the time you come to know the truth, you are already in a deep hole. Hallelujah. People are not saying. You are already in a deep hole. Your finances are 10,000. Your expenses are 18,000. Hallelujah. You are already in a deep hole. Lord, how do I navigate here? I know I was not a good steward before. I heard your word, but I am here. Mercy. Hallelujah. Now we are appealing to the mercy of God so that you can be pulled out of that wall and be put on a 
place on a platform where now this spiritual principle can be applied. Giving and receiving, investment and saving, opening up of multiple streams of income and becoming a channel of blessing to others. Hallelujah. When you are crying out for God mercy, he is to come out of that so that, Lord, I'm already at 18 and my income is 10. I never knew all of these things. Mercy on my life. Pull me out of this hole. And there are people God has pulled them out. They move now to 32. Hallelujah. Amen. When you move to 32, what is God's message to you? Because 18 has swallowed you. Now you are 32. You've got a playing ground. You've got a, a, a I'm missing the English word. You understand? You are, you are at 18. You are 32 minus 18. There is a, play, a part where you can play now. What is God's message to you? Please activate now what my word says. Giving and receiving. Investment and saving. Opening up channel of, of, of blessing. And, and become a blessing also to other people. Opening up other stream of income. So that you are not going back into the hole. Since you have heard the word. And your heart is sincerely ready. And wanting to move there. Hallelujah. God is merciful. So when we are praying next Sunday... We are, we are asking God, for those who are here, glory, mercy. When God has shown you mercy and has lifted you, it's not to say I was 18. Now God has lifted me at 32. Let my expenses be 40,000. It means you are going back where you were and you have not learned. And then in a good way of working, let us prolong this process of you learning. It's painful. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's, it, is, it, it is the pain of a process are better than the, the consequences of disobedience. Amen. The pain of God processing you are better than the consequences of disobeying what he said. Amen. When you are, God has had mercy on you and raised you up, Please remember, he is wanting you to get to the level because you have received his word. Prior to his word, things were tough. You have received his word and he has opened up things for you. It is for you now to start activating what the scripture says. Hence, we're saying some of you, before promotion comes, before you are raised up, you need to hear this message so that you understand what is the heart of God. God doesn't want you to everything to be tight throughout. Hallelujah. So that you can learn to invest, to save. If you look in the budget, how much do you save? Nothing. When he's on the second of the month, the money is gone. Everything is gone. You are now looking at the calendar. When is month end? Hey, today is just the third. Hey, after a lot of hours, you check again, it's just the fourth. Hallelujah. Why? You are waiting for month end because things are tough. And when month end come, after two days, the money is gone. Debit order. Tin, 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 tin. Hey! When we are crying out for God's mercy, when they give you that gap, is for you to apply principle. How about start investing? How about start saving? How about start finding? Lord, apart from my salary, what else can bring me income? Hence, we are giving you a leeway is for you to begin to apply those principles in the name of Jesus. God is merciful. And when he shows you mercy in the area of finances, please remember the scriptures. Remember the principle of the word of God and apply them in the name of Jesus. When you are faithful at one level, they work at a saloon, it's time for them to go as they are going. Uh, she's going. It will create a discipline and accountability system within you so that when you are here, you are still faithful. When you are there, you are still faithful. When you are up there, you are still faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, before we pray to number four. Hallelujah. Number three, deal honestly with people and in business transactions. God does not bless the wicked. God bless the righteous, including the righteous 
in doing business in the right way. Deal honestly with people and in business transactions. Amen. Hallelujah. Even this, all of this I've said to you, when you meet wealthy people and whatever, please ask them. Hallelujah. When you see a millionaire, don't say, please, can I have a million? No. What are the principles that have guided your life and have continued to guide your life for you to be there and remain there? Hallelujah. Because those principles will help you. When they give you a million without this principle, I'm telling you, I blew it away as well. Hallelujah. So deal with people and in business transaction in an honest way. Since it's finances, let's lean more toward business transaction and finances. Leviticus 25 verse 14 summarizes this nicely for us and says, and if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. Hallelujah. People of God say amen. It's the scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Meaning let us not take advantage with the other person so that we can gain more to their detriment. That's what we are saying. When it's like that, please remember underwriting that point. When you are doing it like that, God is not part of it. Because it does not reflect the character of God. Hallelujah. If I sold you 20 bottles of water, amen, when I invoice you, I will invoice you 20 bottles of water. But if within me, I think, no, you have too much money, I deliver 20, but let me invoice you 30. Even if you don't know, you pay me for 30. The owner of everything knows you have duped the other person. Hallelujah. We deal. In business transaction, financial transaction, in, with honesty. You will see two people, they are friends, they are going to business. When they are going to business, everything is as if everyone's intention are right. But when, wait when the payment comes. Hallelujah. We had agreed it will be 50-50. Now when they have paid us 100000 I should get 50000 you should get 50000 And we shake hands, look forward to the next business transaction. But why is it going in my heart that, no, since the money has come, let me say to him they didn't pay everything so that I can get 70, he get 30. Hallelujah. Have you not seen, noticed things like that? We had agreed 50-50. The money came, let us share 50-50. But why are you going to oppress and say, no, they didn't pay all the money. So just take this 20000 When they pay, the other one will come. They have already paid. So I take 80 I give you 20 Two months when you cry, hey, these suppliers, these customers are not good customers. You can even start swearing at them. While it is your friend, he has chow 80000 and give you 20000 When you make a lot of noise, you say, oh, they were merciful. They have brought in 20000 Here is another 10 why? Go, you are dealing with in, uh, not honestly in that transaction. And God is not part of it. God, scripture says, I think uh, Psalm 5 verse 12. God will bless for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. God will bless the righteous, not the wicked, not those who are doing crooked things. When I have sold you 10 items, let me invoice you for 10 items. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's coming to church also next Sunday. Amen. Why? Because it will build a system. You are building a system within you. If that system is dishonest, at higher level, it will be amplified. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please say amen. We have said this message may be tough, but let's deliver because I know what is coming. Hallelujah. It has started knocking even at my wife and I's door. I know what is coming. Hence God is preparing to show when you are here, remember there is a higher level. 
in the, in the dealing of finances, when you are to one million, please remember there is 10 million. Remember there is 100 million. Hey, there is another line. There is another number with nine zeros called a billion. So don't put a cap by being dishonest at the level where you are at. Hallelujah. Deal honestly in every business transaction. Hallelujah. Because there is a scripture, I don't know if I gave it to you. Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. There it is. But he who gathers by labor will increase. Hallelujah. The other people may not know that you are you are stealing from them, if that's the right way. Because sometimes in business you use the terminology, no, I'm just jubing them and whatever. It's to pacify the conscious, but in actual sense, you are stealing from them, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please say amen. <laughs> because I'm saying the truth. Hallelujah. It will diminish. Hallelujah. There is a part where we, we go and, and buy meat. If it's beef, there is a shop that we go and buy meat. Sometimes, if, uh, most of the time, it's my wife or she'll send me. Me, I don't mind. I'm not the man that I can't buy meat. No, I'll go and buy meat. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I already have one beautiful in the house, so I don't mind. <laughs> okay, men understand what I have just said. Amen. I will enter and buy me. So one day my wife told me, you know those people at the back, they are sometimes crooked. They will say, if you are buying meat for 500, they can, they can say to you, let's put for you for 700. Then you give us 100 here, but you will pay 500 at the till. Hallelujah. We say, no, in our house we don't do that because we don't want to bring the curse into our home. Hallelujah. Many uh, encounters. For me, I've gone there several times, but I've had two encounters like that. Then he said, I think, let's just put for you here for 700. I know you're buying for 500. I said, no, 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 no. I will put the sticker as you. All this meat is 500. Remember, they were put on the way, they put a price. You see, but they want to put the price for 500 and give me the meat worth 700 so that I can give them 100. Hallelujah. Have I not benefited from human standard? Yes, but I don't want. Hallelujah. God has already said the curse of the Lord is on the house of the criminal. Amen. I don't say, Lord, move in the supernatural. No, Patrick, you are a criminal. You rob those people. Hallelujah. The owner may not know, but I don't want to plant that seed because it's wrong before God. Number two, I am also in business because if I do that, I have planted the seed. And in terms of seed and harvest, I can't harvest in the same quantity. It, mine must be more. Because it's a harvest. I planted the seed by robbing meat. And we are eating the meat and praying in tongues. But it's a stolen meat. Hallelujah. It's a stolen meat. Amen. So I tell those people, no, we don't do those things at home. Even here, we wanted to buy a battery. I don't know when I go to Nelspret, the other car, the battery. And last week, it was giving an issue. The other week, an issue. So let me go. I call insurance two times this. I jump start. Two days, battery again. So we say, I'm starting. The car is not starting. Jump start. Insurance car. Ah, let me just go and buy a battery. When I got, oh, Mr. Musa, the last time we bought this battery was 2016. Lifetime is three years to four years. Now, God has been gracious to you. It's six years. Amen. Now when I'm dealing with this, somebody's now this guy say, say if they say it's expensive, we can organize for you a battery. Hallelujah. We can organize for you a battery. And ask, where will you organize for me a battery? You are working at the battery stand. Amen. He's, when they go out to do uh, breakdowns of, uh, uh, to help with insurance caller, in that process, they will take one extra battery and then they will meet me on the road or at home, and they put it, and if the battery there, because it's four grand, then I can give them two grand. We have helped each other. Hallelujah. And you say, no, I don't do it like that in my home. I will pay what the invoice says from your boss. 
Huh? Okay. You can, expensive like that. You say, yes, it's fine. I will pay that way. Hallelujah. Let me play. I can report you, but I did not. Amen. Dealing in business transactions. People are doing business, even when you are selling nail stuff and whatever. Remember, it's a business. When you go somewhere else, you rob Marco for 100. Please remember, when you are being robbed, it can't be 100. Because that was the seed. When you have it, it has to be more than the seed. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we say, oh, uh, politicians are corrupt. You know what I have discussed? There is a seed in the politician. And there is the same seed in us. Based on the Adamic nature. Amen. It's just we will see them corrupt because of the amount of money is involved. But if you look also closely, you also behave in the same way. Hallelujah. If I say I'm standing here, please come in the line. I am giving out gift. Amen. When you are here and I'm saying I'm giving one gift, collect one gift from the table. Why is your heart saying let me get three since I'm in the front of the queue? Why? Come and receive one plate of food. I look here. Let me take two because I'm in front. Amen. Then I can go out and say a politician are corrupt. Why? Because for them, also they were in the front of the queue. But then for them, it's millions. You, it was two plates of food. But the seed is the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, we didn't just, I was not born already, I'm at this age. I also say I'm born and like a primary school and whatever. It's like that, even in school, when they say make a line. Hallelujah. We study with Mr. Basangila there. When he comes, we come. Make a line when we are in high school. There was a time we would call it is a, uh, a day of uh, Makoleko. Makoleko is because they were making a way they were making milk. It was too heavy, so we gave it that name. They give you one bread because of the school where we study. Uh, it's to celebrate, you know, this, uh, some of these Catholic things. They give you a bread and a meal. But within you, when you are there in front, I want, let, can I not get two bread and two milks like this? But the queue is long. Why? It's because I arrived first. Amen. While they say it's one per person, if there is extra, we can give to other people. But when I am in front, I want more. Amen. The politician as well is the same. When they are in front, they want more. But as we say, politician are corrupt. Hey, check as well. When you are in front, do you go for two, for three, when they say you can only have one? Hallelujah. Level two. When you are in front, they say you are giving one sheep. Why do you say, let me take three? I say, I take three. Adamic nature. And then that thing, it's in everyone. And so I'm giving even my own example. But if it is not dealt with, when you are in front is millions. The people will say you are corrupt, but it's the same seed you have not dealt with it throughout your existence. Hallelujah. When you are in the front of queue, they say is one per person. Is one per person. But if I feel, no, let me take three. I'm in front. If somebody else will miss, that is their own problem. They are at the back of the queue anyway. Me, I'm in front. Same principle in politics. They are in the front, so the budget came to them first to build 10 houses. Let me take two houses for myself first, then I will build only eight. Why? I'm in the front of the queue. Hallelujah. I'm mentioning this example because we are dealing with warnings. Amen. When finances come. Lastly, before we pray. Every wealthy people, person, among the discipline that they have built and they will tell you about is this, what is diligence. Proverbs 10 verse 4. They say when you are doing your work, work with diligence. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. But the hand of the diligent will make rich. The one who pays, who put effort in what they are doing. They will, make, they will become rich. There is another one that says, the one who is lazy, even 
the, the diligent can come and eat their own meat because they are lazy. When you see everyone who has made it, they've got a level of diligence. How they are so meticulous in what they are doing. They don't just do things themselves. Amen. Now, if they are up there, they've got diligence. You, you are still here. Why do you think diligence is the by the way thing for you? Hallelujah. Another scripture then we explain. Uh, Proverb 12, 24. The hand of the diligent will do what? Hallelujah. Will rule. If somebody in the banking system is diligent, he's the one who's going to rule. If somebody is diligent in marketing, he's the one who's going to rule. You, you go out, you will go and ask from the person because he has put diligent attention, effort in what he's doing. Then he becomes king in that sphere and the other people will go to him for help. Principle. And there are more. I don't know if I gave you this one, my last one. Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plans of the diligent will surely, will lead surely to plenty. There it is. Hallelujah. But those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. Hallelujah. And the reason I am reading in Proverbs only on this month is to show you one thing. One of the wisest pastors ever lived, second to Jesus. Prior to Jesus, he was the wisest man and the richest person called King Solomon. God is inspiring him to write Proverbs. And he's saying the diligent will rule. He's a wealthy person. is to show you that there is you can't succeed in a business that you are running just in jail. Hallelujah. Amen. We are all black people here, so no one will get offense. Have you not heard, hey, black people, the way they run business, I don't want to deal with them. Why? Diligence is not there. Amen. If they are sewing your dress, they say it will be finished in three days. If it's a black person, why do you put in your heart? No, let's give it another three days. Because in three days, the time they have committed, they won't do it. Amen. And you, you must understand, no, we are all blessed, so you are my brother, you are my sister. Hallelujah. Is it calling that this time? No. This time calls, you are calling me. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because there is no diligence. Can you come and tent at my house? Yes, I will come. Eight o'clock, I'll be there. But it's not going to come at eight. It will come at ten. And when you see, why didn't you come at eight? The person is surprised. Why are you shocked that I'm late? Even if I'm a black person, I have to come late. Because there is no diligence. Hallelujah. There is no diligence. The diligent will rule. Hallelujah. The diligent will rule. The hand of the diligent will rule. But the lazy man, uh, is it there? Proverbs 20, 12, 24, last, last. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Please put it there. Let's see it before we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please look at God's ways. He says the hand of the diligent will rule. But the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Hallelujah. When this is being shared by Solomon, he's got to show you. And even here when I'm saying, when you find rich people, wealthy people, people who are doing well in a particular field, one of them is diligent. So that they rule in that sphere. They rule in that industry. They rule in that discipline. There is diligence. Hallelujah. When wealth comes and it's just anyhow, any way you are doing things, it's a matter of time before that person comes down. It requires diligence. Amen. Next Sunday, by God's grace, we conclude here. But you need to hear so that when we do anointing, we pray for you.
we are praying for you and we're asking God for the grace to give you innovation. Let money begin to identify with you. Another preacher will confirm again what he said last on Friday night, that money is a spirit. Hallelujah. Money is a spirit. How do you attract it? Amen. Money is a spirit. Hallelujah. There are other people, money doesn't want to identify with them. They are trying to pray and trust God. May that thing be reversed. Hallelujah. When money has to come your way, it's diverse. It goes to somebody else because it doesn't want to identify with you. Because there is a spirit that is testing and stopping it from coming to you. We want to trust God that that thing be reversed. Amen. That is what is happening in this thing. Hallelujah. And we say for those who want to sow seed as we do that because if money is involved, please bring it to a quality seed next week. And again, as I say, we are revival house. It does not mean when you don't bring a seed, we will not say, I pray and anoint you and send it to you to pray. Hallelujah. You understand that? If in your all, you don't have, even God knows you don't have, you don't have. If you have, and you say, I'm not going to give, there is nothing I can do but to pray and anoint you, my brother. Amen. If you have, you give, you'll be anointed. If you don't have, you will be anointed. If you have, you don't want to give, you will be anointed. Amen. Because this thing we are just doing my priestly duty as per the revelation God has given me. And let him, the blesser, the true blesser, move on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. offering, please just hold it in your hand. Hallelujah. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Next time.